Why do the wealthy use whole life insurance? I'm going to start this video with a story. Uh, I had met a young power couple, I refer to them as, uh, early 2021, January of this year. And they were in the market for whole life insurance. They had an interest in the cash value. They had been researching for quite some time and we had a meeting and to make a long story short, they're looking at a significant amount of money going into a policy on a yearly basis, uh, seven figures. Now, this couple is younger than me. Uh, they do an annual revenue. I should say what they do in a month is close to what we do in a year. Um, so we've got some work to do to try and learn from them and get to that level. But I'm very impressed with this couple. They do very well, very wealthy. So the purpose of this example or this video is to really share how the wealthy utilize cash value life insurance. Now, had a great meeting with this couple, went through exactly what to do, different company selection or different companies, how to choose, how to design a policy, really liked them. And they're ready to move forward, but they reach out and they say, hey, before we move forward, we'd like you to connect with our attorney. They, my attorney is one of the three people I trust with my money and one of them is my wife. <laughs> so that's the message I get uh, from the individual. I say, yeah, sure, no problem. We'd be happy to connect because we always design policies for maximum cash value. Um, so connect with the attorney and she is one of the best attorneys I've ever met in terms of estate planning, tax planning, both domestically, international, internationally. She knows her stuff. I'll also say that she knew cash value life insurance better than most professionals, financial professionals and insurance professionals that have been in the business for 30 years. I was extremely impressed with her level of knowledge. And the reason why is that this attorney actually works with high net worth individuals. Now, when I say high net worth, I'm talking ultra high net worth individuals, moving money overseas, knows what to do from strategic planning. She is the go-to source for that and she knew her stuff. So had that meeting with her, she's one of this couple's advisors to make sure that whoever is talking to her clients is doing the right thing because if you're doing the wrong thing, She's gonna knock you out. <laughs> so she came in, had a lot of questions, went through everything. At first, it was kind of like, all right, I gotta know my stuff for this call. Fortunately, I, I do because I love cash value life insurance. I'm a nerd with it. But had a fantastic call with the couple, the attorney, everyone on that call. Um, and a quick side note to that story, I actually ended up hiring the attorney because I was so impressed with her and I really want someone like that in my own network because she can add a ton of value to just about everyone we work with. With that level of expertise, professionalism and knowledge, perfect fit too in a lot of ways. Um, her name's Elizabeth, we've got podcasts with her, we'll be doing more in the future, the attorney that is. Anyway, the purpose of that story is working with a wealthy couple did extremely well. They've done over a hundred million in revenue in a short period of time, three to four years. Working with individuals like that and in my experience in working with banks and corporations, when working with these type of individuals, specifically with cash value life insurance, they have someone else or a group of advisors that come in and really vet the product, vet the advisor, the agent, and that, in this case it was me in that story I just shared, to make sure that everything is set up properly. Now, why I put so much emphasis on that and why I started with that story is when we are setting up a whole life insurance policy, we either hear great things about it, that banks, corporations, and wealthy individuals do it, or we hear not so great things about it, Dave Ramsey says it's horrible. Financial advisors say stay away from it. There's two opposite ends of the spectrum. Yet we know it works because these individuals are very smart with their money. People up at the top, banks and corporations, there's a reason they are doing it. And really, when I look at the cash value, what are my core benefits? Safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money. The death benefit gives me leverage from a legacy standpoint as well in terms of passing money, but it's got a ton of advantages and has been used so successfully for such a long period of time. So we're gonna go through some bullet points here. Let's have some fun with this. So why do they use it specifically? So we shared that story. They had someone come in and vet the process, the product, me, to make sure it was a fit. But what are the specific reasons why wealthy individuals 
purchase these products. So tax treatment, number one, huge tax advantages to cash value life insurance, specifically focusing on the cash value. The death benefit has tax advantages as well in the sense that death benefit proceeds are always paid out 100% income tax free income tax-free, not estate tax-free. We would need some type of trust if, we're, if we've got a large taxable estate. So when I have a life insurance policy, payments I make to the policy are made with after-tax dollars. Unlike a 401k where I can deduct payments, payments I make into a life insurance policy like a Roth IRA are made with after-tax dollars. So I pay with after-tax dollars. It grows tax-deferred meaning as it grows, I do not pay any tax on it, and I can access it completely tax-free if I do everything properly. Now, I wanna add a little bit of distinction here because I mentioned the word tax-deferred, and then I've got tax-free. Cash value life insurance technically does grow tax-deferred, and the reason it has that classification is because there are instances in which I can pull money from a life insurance policy and it can be taxed. Two quick examples are one, if I just cash a policy out. If I've paid in a million dollars and I have two million dollars in cash value and I say I'm done with this thing, give me the cash value, just give me a check for the entire amount. The company would send us a check for that two million dollars. However, if I cash out a policy, all of the gains are taxable as ordinary income. So if I paid in a million, I have two million, I cash it out, that $1 million gain is taxable to me as ordinary income. Not that pleasant. That's one way a taxable event can occur. So that's where it would grow tax deferred, and if I cash it out, I've got to deal with taxes. The other way is if I trigger what is called a modified endowment contract, a MEC. If that occurs, my cash value grows tax deferred, and anything I pull out, regardless if it is a policy withdraw or a policy loan, is taxed as ordinary income, and I have an age 59 and a half rule as well, where, where if I touch it prior to age 59 and a half, I have to deal with a 10% penalty tax on the gains. Not that pleasant. So we don't want those taxable events. They're very easy to prevent, but it is possible for a life insurance policy to become taxable. We wanna make sure we avoid that in all situations. If we do everything properly, we can access it 100% tax-free. Okay, let's progress on. So wealthy people see the value in this product and put a ton of money in here. What are the specific advantages? Let's have some fun here. So if we have a typical case where someone's paying in, could be 100,000 per year, 500,000 per year, 10,000 per year, the amount doesn't matter as long as the policy is designed properly, but let's assume it is $100,000 per year. If I pay in $100,000 per year, when we design this, this policy, here's what you'll see the wealthy individuals do and anyone can do this. My money can go toward one of two areas. I can pay it toward the premium, which first buys me death benefit and does not show up in cash value, or I can pay it directly toward riders, this PUA, paid up additions rider, that accelerate the cash value growth. It's there right away for me. I'm gonna show an example on this too. But this is the key. So I would want as low as I can possibly go on that premium and then optimize the PUA component. Okay, that is how I optimize the cash value and make a, an unattractive policy very attractive. So what do the wealthy like about it? Liquidity. Money is always accessible in a cash value life insurance policy. If it is individually owned, even if it's owned by a trust, if I set things up properly, I can still have access to it. Parking safe money. This is huge with cash value life insurance. A lot of people we've worked with over the years have expressed that, hey, this is my bond alternative. I can put money in here. It's almost a, it's a fixed asset equivalent, goes nowhere but up over time. I can access it if I want, but really I'm just parking money here. I see it grow, the tax benefits are nice, and if I die, my entire legacy is left via a death benefit. This is very similar to how BOLI works. Let's take a look at a BOLI. So BOLI stands for Bank Owned Life Insurance. This is a bank we worked with earlier this year. This was their second deposit. $10 million went in. There's their immediate cash value. There's their immediate death benefit. 
about $24 million. That is spread out on 30 officers. Boley is a little bit different from a traditional policy, but what they're doing is parking a payment and just letting it grow over time. All of these other columns represent the companies that were selected, which we're gonna to touch on this too. Look, Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life. There's a reason they select those companies. Let's go back. Payment flexibility. So this is going back to individually owned policies and for corporations. So if I go back to that example where we mentioned the $100,000, if that's the amount, I want the ability to pay into a policy per year, but I do not want to receive a bill for $100,000 per year, I can literally design it where I commit to that minimum premium, which was how much? $10,000 per year, and then at my discretion, I can add another 90 k Whether I do it or not, it's completely up to me. So now, the neat part about this is I'm taking an insurance policy, which can be, frankly, boring. If I think insurance policy, I pay the same amount, same, same amount every month, every year. I gotta pay this premium forever, like any insurance product. And something good happens via the life insurance benefit, that's paid out only if I die. So something bad has to happen for that claim to be paid out. Throw that approach out the window. And how do I turn it into a flexible savings asset where I can bounce my payments up and down, commit to a minimum amount, add more discretion. A lot of corporations will do this. So for example, so let's take a look at a corporate policy, which is the same type of policy that you or I could obtain. So we see a policy here. They are paying in $100,000 per year for a period of seven years. Different from the bank-owned life insurance product in the sense that 100 goes in and they've got just under 90% of their payment in cash value right off the bat. Death benefit of two and a quarter. This is on an age 50 male. Break even point between years three and four. This is a policy that anyone can obtain. Any individual can obtain it. It's not exclusive to corporations. This is just like that example I mentioned, the $100,000 payment, 10,000 premium, 90,000 toward PUAs. What a lot of companies and individuals do we work with is exactly this. Instead of paying a $100,000 premium payment or bill each year, they like the idea of getting that in, but they don't wanna be committed to it in case cash flow goes up and down, they'll commit again, to that minimum 10K. And that's consistent with people putting in a million, 100,000, whatever. Everyone likes that flexibility because life happens, or there may, might just be another opportunity that I have that I can shift funds in the meantime. So let's continue on here. Payment flexibility is huge. The tax benefits are really big here. So we touched on this already over here, as far as this one, accessing the money tax-free. I also wanna to touch on this piece in respect to loans. So a unique feature to a cash value life insurance policy is being able to take policy loans. <clears throat> and really how this works is as I take policy loans, I continue to receive dividends and interest on my entire cash value, meaning any money that is in cash value and any money I pulled out as if I never touched it in the first place. There's no lost opportunity cost there. Now the one drawback to loans right now that we see expressed often by wealthy individuals is the interest rates are high with insurance companies. They're between five and 6%. The advantage is convenience. I just request the money, I get it. It's classified as a loan really because of, because of the tax benefits. I can pay it back however I want. I don't even, don't even have to pay it back. But if I intend to, that interest rate with most companies is between five and 6% when I look at whole life insurance products. So what I can do, and we've seen this become very popular recently, is taking a policy to a bank, to a lender, assigning your cash value as collateral to the lender and receiving a line of credit. A lot like assigning equity in a piece of property to a lender in order to receive a line of credit. Very similar. The nice thing about this is when I leverage a whole life insurance policy, a bank will often view that as lending against cash they understand how it works. You've got the guarantee, the guaranteed cash value interest rate built into the contract, goes nowhere but up. It's very attractive in that respect. 
So the tax benefits are huge, and we touched on the loan there as well, but that's a huge advantage when we look at it. Real estate and business, being able to access my money to invest in my business, invest in real estate. Typically, wealthy individuals do not build their wealth with whole life insurance. They will pass on their wealth with whole life insurance. That's the next point with legacy planning and the death benefit. But in respect to the cash value growth, that is not used to build your wealth. Really how it's often looked at is an alternative to call it a bank account, which does nothing for us. I can position money here. I actually see it grow. As it grows, I don't have to deal with any tax, taxes or taxation on that. And I've got access, access to use it for opportunities such as real estate and business. That's the attraction there. Now the legacy planning, this is where the death benefit comes into play. So death benefit proceeds are paid out 100% income tax free. And we mentioned very briefly earlier that they are not left estate tax free. So this is typically where a trust comes into play. If it's an irrevocable life insurance trust of some sort, we do not write those or set those up. However, we'd encourage you or work with your attorney if you're working with us, or we'd refer you an, an attorney. Elizabeth is the best I know. I, I hired her personally after looking for an attorney forever because she was that good. And I like the way she defended her clients, really. Banks and corporations, wealthy individuals, advisors in this family office. So these two concepts I want to touch on here. And this is something that I've seen these guys do. And it's what I opened with as well with that couple we met, the young super couple that I'm so impressed with. They're humble too, which I really like <laughs> based on the level they're at financially and what they do. But anyway, with that couple, they know their stuff in terms of finance. They're both very sharp. They can make their own decisions. However, when it came to something that they do not understand fully, like their business or areas they're experts in, they brought in an outside advisor that they've hired for other things to say, hey, can you check out this product and can you check out Steve? We want to make sure that everything's set up properly and we're not being taken advantage of because frankly, in the insurance industry, when someone's putting in a huge amount of money, some look at that and say, hey, that can be a huge commission, which is not, that's not what it's about. Do the right thing, set the product up right, maximum cash value, that's what the client wants, and the money will come naturally. So back to this point, wealthy individuals often have advisors. We've got this concept of the family office here, where when decisions are made, especially large financial decisions, this family office involves multiple advisors or everyone in, in there together to vet the product, vet the strategy. This way, no one can just make a decision to say, hey, here's what we're going to do with our money. No, no, no. We want the family to continue to grow wealth over time. So every choice that is made first needs to be approved. It needs to be vetted, approved. And that's, in a sense, what that young couple did, but we see this with all wealthy individuals, they have someone checking things out before they move forward. And it's extremely powerful, and you see people that continue to grow wealth often have this. And anyone can do it. You don't need to have a million dollars to do this. You can start it in a simple manner by working with people you know. Maybe you've got a good friend, a relative, a family member, just to look at things, provide an outside perspective. Maybe they've done research on it before. As you continue to grow your, your wealth and your situation, we can work with individuals that might not cost us anything. Always a good thing to do. And then as you grow your wealth, obviously we want to hire professionals. These guys do the same thing. So banks and corporations that we work with, for example, that bank on life insurance product that we showed you earlier, that's not a case where I just send it to the CEO and CFO and say, hey, here it is. You guys want to move forward? Yeah, here we go. Here's 10 million bucks. <laughs> That'd be nice. But no, it does not work like that. They have to meet with the board. The board must approve it. The first time around, there's a lot of back and forth. They have other executives vetting the product, shopping the product with different agents, different companies. They're doing their due diligence because they're looking at a significant amount of money going into the product. So they have a board that helps them make this decision. So this whole life insurance has been used and is used 
effectively by the wealthy, but the one thing you will find is when it is used, effect, used effectively, if you're looking just, hey, what's the bottom line? How do I set it up where I know it's actually set up like these guys and I don't have buyer's remorse after the fact? It looks like that example for a corporation. Not the Boley, because Boley products are a bit different than what the retail market, individuals, even small businesses can obtain, but this is it. If you've ever seen a traditional whole life insurance policy, it likely had zero in cash value. Maybe I saw one with 50 or 60% of my payment in cash value right off the bat. This is the same company, same product, same out of pocket to the consumer, but designed in a manner where we have a minimum premium, minimum insurance expense, and maximum cash allocation. If we go that route, that's where we have a cash rich policy. So if cash accumulation is a goal of ours, this is where this type of planning, this type of design can be extremely valuable. We can take it to that, that next level. So really looking for about 85 to 90% cash value in the first year is typically what we like to look for there with traditional policies. Some products give you more than that upfront, depending. And what I'll wrap up with too, is we see this wealthy individuals, and I'm a firm believer of this, is when it comes to any product, wealthy individuals do not just put all of their money in whole life insurance. Like, that's not it. They have whole life insurance. They have money in their business. They have money in real estate. They have money in stocks and bonds. They're diversified. That's the thing. Every product out there, every strategy has pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. And we can pick any one of those apart and say, hey, don't put your money here. I can do it with whole life insurance. But the thing is, what are the advantages and do the advantages fit into my situation? Seeing everything from a full transparent view. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoyed the story in the beginning. As I look back, I, I'm glad I met that couple. One, for the relationship with them, but two, who I've met thus far and as we've continued to grow our business, I'm always looking to learn from others. That is really where the value's at, in my opinion. But I do hope that this helps. Reach out if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.